Hi, this is Getting the Best from Your Graphics Exam. Uh, and it's a revision video uh, to do with um, graphics drawing modes, design principles and colour theory, and instrumental third angle projection, um, third angle orthographic projection. Now, we're not going to cover in this video this or this. We're really going to focus on graphics modes to, to um, have a look at the other two videos uh, with regards to design principles and instrumental third angle orthographic projection. Um, so, graphics drawing modes. Uh, we're going to go and have a look at those now. So let's do that. Alright, so this is a very quick recap of graphics drawing modes and we're going to start by just going through all of the drawing modes one by one, starting with, um, I guess, the most uh, simple one, um, the most easy to recognize and some people think the most easy to draw which is the oblique um, so I'm just going to get my gray here so you know just a very simple oblique cube as you know just lighten my line line weight a little bit there we go so as you know in an oblique cube the front surface is the actual shape of the front surface so what's facing you is actually facing you and it's facing you straight on so it becomes true shape, All right? And then we go back at 45 degrees like this, and we draw in the back surface like that. There we go. All right. So um, you know some of the features of the oblique drawing is this area here, or this angle here, 45 degrees. All right. 45 degrees. Not only that, but all of these lines here, one, two, three, these are all 45 degree lines, so they're all parallel to each other, like that, and then these ones are also parallel. And, uh, you know, then you've got your horizontal lines. So, you know, to put it very simply, any sort of um, oblique drawing that you've got, if it's a proper oblique drawing, you're going to be able to see only three different types of lines. You're going to see horizontal lines, you're going to see vertical lines, and you're going to see 45 degree lines. That's it. Oblique. Right? Just write it down here. Oblique. That's the oblique. So that's the oblique. Now, as an aside, there are two different types of oblique uh, drawings. So one is called cavalier, and I'm just going to run out of space here, so cavalier, and the other one is called cabinet. The only difference between the cavalier and the cabinet is that for the ca for the cabinet, I'll just uh, use the uh, this red here, so for ca um, if you're doing a cabinet drawing, sorry, a cavalier drawing, then if this is one and this is one, as in, you know, it's a square, so that's the length of that is one and that's one, then the length of the line going out into the distance is also going to be one. So in this case, it would be actually longer than this, so something like that. So I'm just going to draw in the rest of my cavalier cube, and you'll see that while actually, if you if you measure with your fingers, actually that distance there is very similar to that distance there, and that distance there, obviously, that's a cavalier um, approach to an oblique drawing. If, on the other hand, I'm going to do this in green. If, on the other hand, we're going to use a cabinet drawing, we actually, if we, if we now go one for this side, so that's one for that side, one for that side, then we actually make the distance of this less than one and you know depending on who you talk to that's either a two-thirds or a half or whatever it is I'm gonna just put a half here so in a cabinet um, oblique drawing you actually only go half the distance into the page now what you get then is basically this gray so I'm just gonna go over that with green so you actually get a re more realistic looking cube but in a sense it's you know not accurate as in, 
that distance there is only half of what it should be, which is one. We do that to make the drawing look more realistic. And if you're just drawing without really thinking too much about it, naturally you'll probably halve this distance for um, the distance going into the page. So this distance here going into the page. And that's, so naturally we would draw a cabinet oblique drawing. And that's what you'll mostly see. Every now and again you'll see somebody do a cavalier drawing. And that's, you know, the advantage of that obviously is that you can then actually measure measure these distances into the into the page here um, whereas in a cabinet you might not be able to tell exactly what the distance there is but it doesn't look as as um, convincing if you like all right so that's the oblique so let me now just um, delete some stuff all right so let's now move on to the isometric isometric move that down to there. Good. Um, and so how do you draw the isometric? Well, very simply, upside down T, 30 degree lines, like that, and then turn one of them into a parallelogram, something like that, back this way. Um, this obviously is a cube, so it's a special case. It kind of looks, as you can see, like a hexagon. I'm now going to outline it so that it comes a little bit clearer. Uh, what's actually happening? Let's use black for the outline. So really, these are the only parts that you'll actually see. So as you can see, using construction lines and outlines as we should be. There we go, with a little bit of rendering there. So that is the isometric. Um, 30 degree line in here. Oh, oops, not 45, but rather 30 degree. And 30 degrees there. All right. Um, some people like to refer, instead of the 30 and the 30, to the angle in between here, which is 120. So that we get 30 plus 120 is 150, plus 30 is 180, so to make the straight line. So that is the isometric drawing. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, uh, let's talk about, actually, while, while we're thinking about that. If you look at the isometric drawing, one of the real features of it is that none of these, none of these surfaces, if you look at that, that is not a square, neither is that a square or a rectangle, nor is that. So none of the faces, none of any of these faces, are actually true shape. So, what then are the features of um, an isometric drawing? Well, firstly, you only have two types of lines. One are the vertical lines, so vertical lines, and all of the other lines are either 30 degrees in one direction or 30 degrees in the other direction. So 30 degree lines and no true shapes. That's it. That's how you can really quite quickly recognize what um, drawings are isometric. So let's move on. Okay, now the planimetric. So the planimetric is quite a tricky one. Um, so I'll just type it in here. So planimetric. Planimetric. There we go. And so. Planimetric, as is, as you can see in the name, plano, plan, right, so that is your hint. So the planimetric drawing is one that's based on the plan of the object. So again, I'm going to start with an upside down T the same way as for the isometric, but this time I'm going to draw a 45 degree line here. And another 45 degree line here, which if you've done your maths, you know that that means that in here we've got a 90 degree angle. All right? And then I'm going to actually draw my square here, like that. Now, I'm just going to see if this works. Hopefully it does. Uh, nope, I'll just. Oh, there we go. Now, there you go. So notice how this is actually a square. 
and in fact sometimes it's easier to draw parts of your drawing so you know actually a square sometimes it's easier to draw parts of your drawing actually on that 45 degree angle so you draw your plan on a 45 degree angle you turn your page on a 45 degree angle and then when you're ready to do the rest of it you turn it back like this Let's see if I can get it back in the same spot Oh, I can make it bigger and smaller as well that's pretty exciting um, anyway, so I'll move it down to here, make it a bit smaller. There we go. All right, so there is my plan, and now I'm going to draw my uprights and very carefully recreate. And in fact, I'm going to just turn my page. I'm going to recreate the square at the top. All right, so as much as possible, that is actually a square. There we go. Now, turning back, there is my planimetric drawing, um, or at least the construction lines for it. Let me do it now do the outlines. Actually, I'm missing this line here. So now I'm just going to do my outlines. So black, slightly darker. And so there we go. So one, two, three, there we go. So this is a planimetric drawing. Now, um, because we drew um, this top surface and the bottom surface as being actual squares or rectangles, or in this case, obviously, these squares, they are, in fact, true shape. And that is one of the major features of a planimetric drawing. The plan is true shape. So let's uh, recap that up here. So what are the features? So your, the lines that you have are vertical lines and 45 degree lines. So there's only two types of lines in the same way as the isometric and in that way they are in fact related. But very crucially, you've got a true, t true shape top. Um, and that is the planimetric. So let's move on. Actually, before we move on, um, obviously one of the things that I didn't say, but which is very important, is that these lines are parallel. Right? So it's a parallel projection. Parallel. I believe that's how you spell parallel. So it's a parallel projection, the same way that an isometric and an oblique is. Um, so now we're going to move on to the non-parallel projections. So that means perspective projections.